RevoPoint sent me their new 3D scanner. The Morocco by RevoPoint. A handy little 3D scanner. This device has a unique all-in-one design with a 2K AMOLED display empowering users to scan and process models on one device. Now the one that they sent me is the Pro Package, which minus a few cables came with everything you see here. Contained in a surprisingly small package actually. It comes with a little carrying case that from out of the box has a bunch of cables in it. These calibration boards allowing you to calibrate for near and far mode, which we'll get into later as well as some markers for different types of objects. It helps with 3D scanning. A small model of Julius Caesar so that you can test your machine right out of the gate. A charger, charging cable, and of course, the scanner itself. Which is about the size of an old handheld gaming system, really. Now, I've never owned a 3D scanner, and I've only used one a couple of times, so I had to learn how to use this thing. And as it turns out, it was actually pretty simple to figure out. Now the carrying case that it comes with also holds uh, your lanyard, a little turntable for getting all the way around objects, a tripod base, and a few other accessories including the instruction manual. Now to the interface, which actually makes this thing extremely usable. Remember, you don't have to hook this up to a computer, you have no cables, everything is all in one. And this is what you see in the screen, and you have several different things going on here. You have multiple different camera views, and you have this button, which currently says near. And as you would expect, that allows you to scan things up close and get greater detail. Now, if you push down on that button, it goes to far mode, which allows you to scan larger objects. And of course, it's not a physical button, it's just touchscreen. You also have this handy distance bar at the top, which tells you when you're in the right area to begin scanning. When it's green, you're good. When it's orange or red, it's not. Now, if you swipe down on the screen, it brings up this menu. You can obviously screen record like I'm doing now, but within the menu, you'll find every tutorial video you will need to operate this thing. All of this is in the machine. You can set a timer, change your model's properties, you can select its color, whether it's dull, glossy, or metallic. I will say that I did find that when I scanned anything that was glossy, dulling it with some powder or dulling spray actually helped quite a bit, just like with any other scanner. We can go through the calibration process, which is what those calibration boards were that I showed earlier in the unboxing. Set a timer, view your screenshots, look at all of the models that you've already recorded, and it even comes with a handy quick start guide. And before anyone says anything, yes, I know I need to charge it. Now for this little video, I decided to scan this old helmet I had laying around, so I went in to change my scan settings, which is actually quite easy to do. Select your accuracy, your alignment, object type, color, etc., all from that menu. Now, one thing I found from my experience with the little bit of scanning I've been able to do with this machine is you have these three views here. And the one on the bottom left with the crosshair is the one you really want to focus on because it gives you the most accuracy in the end. Now, there are two modes for scanning. You have continuous, which is what it sounds like on the tin, and single shot. Now, single shot allows you to get just exactly what it says, single shots scanning of your object and it's much more detail and a lot cleaner but you do have to go around and line up the model in the screen and do it again now with continuous mode again it's exactly what it says on the tin you walk around the object or put it on a turntable like the one that's included that i showed earlier and you can get a model all the way around the thing now with very little experience with 3d scanning i managed to get a pretty decent model of this old helmet and just for demonstration purposes, I didn't go all the way around in this one, but you can see scans in full color and does a really good job, you know, only scanning one part of it, of course. But the bonus is that if you don't like what you scanned, you can just delete it. But let's go ahead and scan the whole helmet this time, and I'll show you some of the editing features that exist within this machine. Now again, this is all coming from an amateur, and I will say that one thing that I learned really quickly is that if you go too fast with this thing, it can lose tracking. It'll go red on the screen, and then you'll get tracking lost. And I found that if you just hold still, it'll find itself again, and you can continue scanning. Sometimes it doubles the model because it gets out of position. That is largely user error. So there is a bit of finesse involved in doing this, but once you get it down, you get pretty clean scans of just about anything. I have found that if it does lose its place, and if you do hold still for a little while, it will actually figure out where it's at, and it'll put the model back together and you can continue scanning. Be patient your first couple go-arounds. You're learning a brand new technology. Once you're happy with where you're at, you can hit the check mark button and have a look at your model. Now this scanner will pick up a bunch of stuff in the background, like the table that I scanned this on, obviously it scanned that as well. 
Probably best to do it on a solid black background. But if you click down in the corner on model, it'll then open the mesh itself and you can begin the editing process. And you'll see all these buttons on the side. These are all methods for editing. The one tap edit almost always works to get a pretty solid model out of this. Now it is a bit dark, but you can see that it actually created a pretty decent model of this helmet. You can obviously move the model around in any direction you want, but there's all of that nonsense left over from the table. So what do you do about it? Can you edit that away? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can. In fact, the thing I was most surprised by was how much editing you can actually do in the machine. The other couple of times I've used 3D scanners, you of course had to import it into a PC, go through a whole process of editing, but a lot of the work can just be done inside this device. Now, full disclosure, I haven't been able to go through all of the different methods of editing that exist within this thing, so you'll just have to discover it on your own. Now, as far as things being scanned that you don't want to scan, there's these tools, rectangle and lasso. You can actually use these to remove all of that or really any part of the model you want just by clicking on the screen. Then selecting the things you don't want and hit delete. It's actually very, very simple. Now, when you want to export an object from the scanner, there's a couple of different options. Through the USB-C port on the side, you can plug it in directly to your computer and transfer the data that way. You can also connect it to Wi-Fi and then connect it to your PC and just transfer it digitally. Full stop, in my opinion, this is an entirely useful tool for just about any profession that involves making. You can scan whatever you want, edit it within the machine, and then export it to whatever your software is that you use to create it into a 3D printable object or however it is you need it. Now, another useful feature of this machine is the screen itself, which actually flips out 180 degrees, allowing you to scan from just about any angle. And when you combine it with a turntable, you can get really steady, very, very clean scans. Add in the included tripod, you can get all kinds of angles on it. Now, because the screen flips like it does, you can also do a selfie scan, which of course means you can turn yourself into an action figure. However, results may vary. In my line of work in the film industry as a prop maker and a fabricator, this is an extremely useful tool for me. It allows me to duplicate whatever I want, wherever I want, and then take it back and make more of them. And with a battery life of about two hours, it's really extremely portable. And I haven't fully learned all of this thing's features yet, but you'll probably see it pop up in more videos in the future. But you know the drill. Follow all the links below to get your hands on one or to find out more. And as always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and to follow me on all the other socials. Thank you again for watching. Props to history.